poker's legendary champions, next generation stars, and tireless ambassadors of the game, sharing their wisdom and guiding your journey to high achievement on the green felt. This is Tactical Tuesday on Chasing Poker Greatness with your hosts, Brad Wilson and John Chai. Welcome, my friend, to another episode of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast. As always, this is your host, Coach Brad Wilson, the founder of ChasingPokerGreatness.com. I'm joined by John, which means one thing, that it's a tactical day. John, you got the got the Tactical Tuesday shirt? It's Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday. We are officially seeing them next week. So what do we have on the agenda for today's episode? We got your hands. It's your turn to tell us what we have on the agenda. Oh, it's me. Um, yeah, so we've relaunched ChasingPokerGreatness.com, and we've actually been categorizing the different episodes of Tactical Tuesday based on concepts. So if you go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com and click the free poker training button, that's your resource for all things Tactical Tuesday. And this upcoming... A couple of months, we're just filling in some gaps as it relates to yeah, content on that portal and adding to the resources. So I guess, first of all, you can check out the new newly relaunched website at ChasingPokerGreatness.com. And secondly, if you have suggestions for topics that you would like us to cover, join Greatness Village and tell us in the Tactical Tuesday discussion channel, or you can you know, send me an email, brad at chasingpokergreatness.com. Always happy to, to be here. So one of the villagers asked us for an episode on hero folds. Yeah. <laughs> You're asking the wrong people. <laughs> like, I looked through my database. I was like, hmm, have I ever made a big fold? Like, let's let's see, like, spots where I didn't see showdown. And I had, like, you know, two pair plus zero. <laughs> no folds. Yeah, no uh, folds. What about hero checks? Just <laughs> checking back and avoiding a trap with the uh, uh, that would actually be a good episode i don't know if i have good hands for that but uh coach Shu definitely had had one that i can think of yeah there uh, he, he's had two that popped to mind where like just checking back exceptionally strong hands and both times he's done it uh villain has had a trap so I don't know how often he does it or if he never shows us the hands where he checks back and <laughs> and he just wins against the hand that would, surely would have called. Uh, however, I do know that in those two instances, they were really, really strong checkbacks. Oh. I think we could probably put together something for hero folds, maybe. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> not but, me, though. <laughs> Shoo. Me, you and Shu, not me. Not, and... Yeah, not, not John, but yeah. we'll see. Um, so today we are looking at donk bets uh so this is here from you know hero donk betting and we're gonna look at two from a poker coaching play and explain that i played uh just last night actually which also means that i don't know what villains had because i don't have the hands downloaded with whole cards up so next week we're gonna share you know the result of what villains folded in in both situations or actually it <laughs> that's that's not true. Um, <laughs> I, I just misspoke, but what villain had in both situations. So this first one is, I, I don't think it's going to take a lot of time to get through. We don't see the river, so, uh, but sometimes I'm shocked by just how much we can talk about very few actions. So this first hand, we, we start out with the jack nine of different suits. The cutoff opens to 2.5 bigs, and we defend the big blind. I'm playing 1K and L on ignition. Uh, so we defend with Jack-9 off. Uh, we're 1,000 deep. Flop is King-7-4 with two hearts. I have the Jack of Diamonds, 9 of clubs. So if you're wondering... <laughs> yeah, wait hand, a second. <laughs> how does this hand move forward? Uh, I'm going to show you how this hand move for moves forward. Uh, so Villain starts out by betting quarter maybe even less than a quarter 16.13 into 55 and i typically like uh, so i typically don't fold facing these sizes 
that often um, tend to call and realize equity and try to realize future bluffing opportunities just in general. But e- even this one for me felt uh, yeah, felt a little like I was forcing it, um, calling the flop. However, yeah, these anytime I'm on the fence, especially like if you are a Poker Coaching Premium subscriber, if I'm on the fence, I tend to do what I think is more interesting. And I think calling is more interesting than just folding, but folding is obviously quite reasonable. Yeah, I think folding would definitely be most people's standard play. I mean, I I I, I would even go as far as to say maybe you could just fold preflop <laughs> when the cutoff opens and you have to check nine off. But anyways, yeah. that's not interesting. Um, Def- definitely not interesting yeah. to jack nine. But yes, again, this is another like very borderline call preflop, and then so I used to is- I used to like just snap fold these spots. Um, Thinking like, I mean, Jack nine, or let, let's just say we had Jack 10, which is maybe a hand that we should, you know, the worst Jack X hand that we should have in the spot. Like I would just snap fold this versus the C bet. Um, and then I remember like looking through your database with you, like a couple, I don't know, maybe like six months ago, eight months ago. And I saw that you're like fold versus flop C bet was like 15% or something. It's just, yeah. If- Facing the very small ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like thin. you see the turn like, you know, like 85% of the time, just something insane. Mine was like, I don't know, mine was really low. Mine was probably like in the 50s or something. Um, yeah. And I just like couldn't understand like how how you could call C bets like that frequently. And I think this is like a really good example of like, yeah, you can like, you only need 18% equity. If this guy's betting range, like you probably have 18% equity and then. When the turn does get checked through, you get some really nice river bluff opportunities. Yep. And I think that's that that's really the main thing here is like you need 18% equity to continue and to have downstream visibilities of strategies that are also profitable, I think is like what pushes it over the edge to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, folding here is like obviously just t- totally reasonable thing. pretty sure you used to just call the spot even before you had downstream visibility of what's profitable now we know for sure that getting to the yeah, river is profitable like, but i mean again it's like 18 percent, right like this needs to be my my equity here and yeah we don't have 18 percent if villain has a king but if villain's just betting like range here on the flop right then we certainly have 18 percent, and yeah it's it's very easy to fold way too often facing very small C bets. And I mean this is like really small, right? This this is like a quarter pot. It's not even a third. Uh so really when villains bet a third or quarter pot, one thing that you just have to recognize is you have to defend like very often. Yeah, like uncomfortably um, wide. Uncomfortably wide, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And you can't just always raise either, because like when you then you, you just start like over bluffing and get yourself in these wacky <laughs> situations with no pair, no draw, um, building pots out of position. Oh, I did a lot of that in April. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> yes. Confirmed. John, John went psychopath for a month or so. And, uh, his results definitely felt <laughs> the impact of him going a little off the rails. Uh, so I call the flop and, the turn is a five of clubs. So basically the turn connects with a bunch of gut shots. Uh, the board is king seven four with two hearts and then the five of clubs. I have jack nine, so <laughs> really just no um, connection with the board. And I just felt like this type <laughs> of turn card was a good turn card to bet, especially if villains betting range on the flop. Um, but... Yeah, so I, I ended up donking 70% on the turn with intentions of donking on lots of rivers as well. So I guess we'll just kind of start here. and I guess I'll ask your opinion of the donk. Um, so I think this is a... Okay, I'm going to speak from like a weekend of just constant sim running that I did with Coach Shu when he came to visit me in LA. All we did was look at turn dong spots after defending the big blind. Um, I think on these types of boards, um, a turn like this is like a perfectly good turn to donk. Um, from what I can tell from the sims, uh, Solver really likes donking um, 7x or 7x turns, 4x turns, and then turns like this that complete um, 
gut shots and, you know, all sorts of traits, I guess. The one thing that I will say is that on those types of turns, uh, the solver like overwhelmingly prefers donking for a really, really small size instead of, you know, this two third, two thirds, three quarters uh, yeah. size donk. It, yeah, it always prefers like the one third um, or quarter on, on the turn and then very frequently follows up with a river over bet. Hmm. Did you run the sim and compare all the sizings? Do you remember by any chance like what the EV difference was between like small and big? I can't remember what the EV differences were. I just remember what what sizes were were preferred. Yeah. Okay. Well, give me the EV differences, and then <laughs> yeah, that, that that's I think pretty important. But yeah, so could have gone smaller. Smaller would most likely have turned out a little better uh, because villain just like raised my turn donk huge, uh, one seventy eight. Um, and yes, I think this is the appropriate time to click the fold button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, all right. I tried all right. my best. Defended yeah. pre-flop too wide, called the flop questionably yeah. wide, and then dunked the turn. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> like, I'll give up now. You, you got it, buddy. Yeah. You, you win this <laughs> this battle. Um, so, yeah, just ended up folding. And like I said, this first hand, pretty straightforward. Um Hand number two, going to be bigger pot and felt like I at least had a more appropriate hand to donk with. So stick around after the break and we'll dive right into the second hand. Are you a lone wolf searching for the ultimate pack? The CPG Wolf Program is a close-knit brotherhood hell-bent on one thing only, chasing poker greatness. Powered by Bleeding Edge Wolf Strats and led by Coach Brad and his lieutenants, CPG Wolves are systematically prepared for almost any spot they'll encounter on the green felt. If you want to plug into an elite team and have a step-by-step -step game plan to realize your full poker potential, you can apply at cpgwolves.com. Space is limited, and the pack is only as strong as its weakest member. So only the hungriest, grittiest, and most driven will be accepted into the program. Applications are open at cpgwolves.com. All right, welcome back from the break in this to this donking episode of Tactical Tuesday, where, yeah, just uh, going through some donking opportunities, seeing how they pan out. First attempt panned out not so well. I think it was a <laughs> belly flop off the high dive. Maybe the medium dive, not the high dive. I think the, the high dive would be a, like getting stacked when I'm donking. This, bet, bet three bet, donk three bet turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's the super high dive. That 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 might actually be like the bridge belly flop. Uh, it's beyond anything. Uh, so here we have the six seven uh, of different suits. The under the gun player opens min. The button flats. Uh, small blind folds, and we complete from the big blind. I believe every player at the table is a reg. Um, Games were not very good on a Saturday evening during Colossus at WSOP. It's just uh, <laughs> the, the recreational players, the, the weaker players, they were hard to come by. Um, so, yeah, we take a flop three ways. Flop a gut shot. Uh, I think you eight. can fold pretty again. Anyways. Amen. Uh, <laughs> You're on stream. I get it. Uh. Well, it, it's not just that. I mean, yeah, I, I could fold pre, but like, how do I get better playing multi-way pots out of position? Uh, play play hands. Oh my god! Yeah, let's just let's just like handicap ourselves in these multi-way pots by starting with seven six offsuit. Well, again, we need fifteen percent equity to continue. We are at a positional disadvantage everywhere. So <laughs> yeah. like, like calling calling could be a mistake, but like at the worst, it's like point two big blind mistake uh, point yeah. three yeah. like it, it can't, it can't you only have two people mistake. bind you it could be worse could could have three or four so. yeah it could have three or four <laughs> only two. um we get the eight four deuce flop which is basically gin i Ooh. guess for this hand yeah. we, we have a gut shot to the nuts uh check to the pre-flop razor the pre-flop razor checks i think 
likely that they're checking range here. Yeah, especially on this board. Yeah, so they can certainly have, you know, over pairs. They can just have all, all the hands mm -hmm. here. And the button, the only thing I know about the button, and it could be relevant, could might not be relevant data point, they, their CBET percentage at the time was something like 86% or so. And, yeah, they're not CBETting here. Um, they're stabbing. However, it felt like this player profile could just be betting a yeah, ton yeah. here on the button. Basically, you think their their bet when check to stat is very high. Yes, that would be the uh, that would be the thought. Yeah. And they bet a third, which again is totally expected. Uh, I I definitely expect very small bets here on, on the flop. Yeah. Um, and I I don't think that I want to really carve out a ra racing range here on this board. So just mostly calling. Um, again, the original preflop opener is, is uncapped too. So right. another consideration. So yeah, um, eight, four deuce, villain bets a third. There's 85 in the pot. We have the six, seven offsuit and we decide to call and the preflop razor folds, which by the way, what are these two cards that the preflop razor folded here? I, I don't know. I, I Definitely not jack are. nine offsuit because you're <laughs> supposed to call if you only need 16% equity with that hand. Hey guys, you, you got you got more equity than you, you might think here, guys. Um, I mean, it's hard to say they don't have overcards. <laughs> they they gotta have something. Yeah, if you don't have overcards, you have a straight draw. So. <laughs> exactly right. So, um, give that give that man their hand back. What are they doing? The turn is a tray of clubs again. One of these like uh, middling cards that complete straights. So Ace Five uh, is in range and five six um a few things that kind of went through my head here i guess the first is while john may not have you know six seven off or five six off here or even ace five off i probably do i probably have all the combos of straights yeah. on the turn um whereas the button doesn't and because i block five six i felt like uh this would be an acceptable spot to donk. Yeah. You just turn what? 32 combos of straights. I mean, that's like that's like all the straights, right? Yeah. <laughs> See? We not? have we have an argument for calling with all the offsuit uh connectors right here. We have all we have all the hands. Um I don't know if I would be doing this with a set. I maybe. I, I don't know. A little I really don't scary. I mean like there. I think like maybe we we could stop and like have a, a brief discussion on what we think the button's flatting ranges looks like pre flop when mm -hmm. the cutoff opens any flats like I, I think this board type is I'd be a little worried that this board type interacts with this range pretty well like I think you could definitely have all the pocket pairs pocket eights and lower um, I think five six suited while like I don't see it getting flat very often pre pre flop um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be an insane flat and then stabbing this flop with a hand like five six would be very very reasonable um i wouldn't expect ace five suited to ever flat in position so i don't think we have to worry about that but i would yeah. worry that like these types of boards interact really well with the buttons flatting range um and then you know like the obviously like the high boards they, they probably don't have very many good hands on yeah and i would say i think this turn specifically is quite good for me um having know. having a lot is of the offsuit like like ha having the offsuit five six and the offsuit ace five, <sighs> I think means that just I I have so many straights compared to the button. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can get on board with that. Especially because, like you said, they they three bet ace five. Right. Right. right so like right. they don't have ace five. They I don't even five five six. I don't even think they have five six. Too, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like so. Anyway, we decided to to donk with a hand that felt somewhat even appropriate, unlike the jack nine of the previous hand, uh, and. <laughs> I did go very big here on the turn. Yeah. Um, you don't like the polar Sims. Polarized. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it felt like uh, I, I am polarizing, right? Like I'm basically saying I, I right. Have but I think even a small donk is pretty polar. It, you know, it's like <laughs> you're not you're not donking small with like eight nine, you know, on the turn or something like that. It's That's true. Probably way better hands than that, and way worse hands. Right. So if I'm polarizing, giving villain a good price to call down versus the bottom end of my polarization also feels a little questionable to me. Yeah, but okay, yeah. You give them a, a good price to, like, crack, you know, 
to catch up to those really, really good hands in your range, I guess. And to just bluff catch. I mean, yeah, but that's why you go stuff. massive on the river. It's like, oh, yeah. you want a bluff catch? <laughs> okay. Well, we're going massive on the turn. Yeah, massive. Okay. And probably massive on the river. Uh, uh, the now our story. Rivers, yeah. Now the river pairs to four. So this was why I brought up the question on the turn of, you know, do I have sets in this four? So the final board is eight, four, deuce, three, four. Uh, so river pairs the board. I still have seven high. There's 300 in the pot. I've got 911 behind. Uh, villain has 1558. So they have me covered by quite a bit. And I really felt torn on this river. Um, plan was to go, you know, big, big. Board pairing river, I was like, oh my God, do I actually have sets? Like, do I have boats? Um, because I know villain has boats. <laughs> like I, know, I know the villain has lot, lot, lots of boats uh, on the river. Um, almost just slam dunk boats. So, yeah. W- what are your thoughts here, I guess? Um, first to act on this. I'd be here. so, like, I'd be so paranoid about not telling a consistent story. Like, kind of donking big on the turn. We're saying we have a straight if we overbet or donk big on the river again, like, would we ever do that with a straight? I I don't think so. So now we're repping boats. And then we just go back to the question that you asked of like, would we donk sets or two pair on the turn? Mm -hmm. (sighs) Or I guess like the, the, the better way to frame that question is does the button, will they think that we donked sets and two pair on the turn? Of course that, that that's always the way to frame it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Like, what, what do you do with Ace Eight here, if you're the button, and you somehow have Ace Eight? Or like, Pocket Fives, I guess. Yeah, I think Some Pocket Fives makes. I think Pocket Fives is most likely their hand. <laughs> yeah. I'd be so confused, but I'd also be scared to turn Fives into a bluff because. I'd be like, am I just going to bluff right into a boat or a straight that's just never folding with, you know, with my great blockers? Yeah. Well, we'll put out my river bet here. Uh, I overbet the river. So I went for, I bet 432. I have 479 behind. There's 291 in the pot. Uh, So. Yeah, you're saying you have a boat. I'm saying that I've got something good. (laughs) And your pocket nines or ace eight or pocket fives should just snap fold. That's what I'm trying to say. But fives blocks the hands that I'm repping. So I think like fives is a much better hand than nines on this river to bluff catch with. Oh, you're not repping those straights anymore, though. You're... <laughs> I mean, villain could imagine that I overvalue, right? Yeah. Like overvalue a straight on the river. This is like, I think that's. That happens consistently. Even strong regs yeah. overvalue their hand out of position in right, many, right. many, many spots yeah. just across the board. So I think I'm fairly protected there. Why not Jam River? Uh, Well, the obvious answer is that Villain has boats, and <laughs> I'm just going to jam into like a range that snaps me off. Yeah, and I guess um, this size puts... Pretty much the same amount of pressure on their pocket nines, eight X, pocket fives. I would think so. Yeah. That extra four seventy nine that you're leaving back probably doesn't accomplish very much. Other than maximizing value when they have <laughs> um, But yeah, I mean it, it's a good question. It's just I, I think it's a bit much and I think yeah. uh, there's diminishing returns for yeah. the extra investment. You need that extra four seventy nine when they have like four or five and ace four. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> is really ace four and much different than, I mean, fives or nines? Like, I don't think so. I, just, I mean, you could tell yourself, like, yeah, we removed some four three suited combos now <laughs> and, and, you know, it's fewer right. boats, but yeah. I mean, fives removes lots of five sixes and right, fives, right. which is maybe four or five is, is, is just the one that you want. Four fives the hand. Yeah. We yeah, call the river with the four five. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I have to imagine villains are going to fold hands like fives and probably call with hands like ace four, even right. Despite everything that we're saying, yeah. Um. So anyway, this is my donking attempt number two here on the river. Uh, villain does in fact fold, and they folded fairly quickly. I don't know exactly what that means. You know, for all I know, I guess they could have had ace something of clubs mm. uh, they could have turned a flush draw yeah um, after betting the flop yeah so we'll know next week you what, know we'll uh once we get the hand the hand histories and the whole card information we'll we'll add it to the actually no we'll be added to the we'll be able to add it to the video before this even comes out yeah i think what's what's interesting What's really interesting about these situations, and just as sort of a a lesson to be learned from doing things like this, is that, I mean, in our case, right now we're talking about the situation, right? I'm thinking more about a holistic donking strategy on the turn. Mm -hmm. And in order to think about such things, you need to get in there and experiment so that you can learn really build out a better strategy like i i think it's just it's something that i say very often just if you want to learn how to navigate uh awkward different situations better then you have to get in those hey 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 i said that in my donkey episode and you said hey you know you could just run some sims for free (laughs) and like actually just learn before you go into the wild and we're torching 432 dollars on the river I, i learned i learned from you john you, you told me all about your your donking sims, and so that that's where the jack nine. Well, that, that's why from. I use the big size on the turn because I told you. I didn't all listen about... to the sizing <laughs> part. I listened to the range makeup part uh, and try to do what makes sense um, logically. Uh, so even though the river overbet here, sort of. No, this is good. Apparently. Fought against my my logic uh, <laughs> on, on the river. I was like, oh my god, like. Uh, I have straights. Now I'm saying I have boats, but maybe, I mean, again, I, I think that it's not completely unreasonable that a set donks the turn and yeah. doesn't have a raising range on the flop. <laughs> yeah. um, I could build an argument for it, really. Oh, but... my God. Just, just the desperation here. It's like, please believe me. Like... <laughs> well, I mean, these situations will happen in the future where I'll have a set, right, on, you know, this situation where I think the preflop raiser is uncapped and I don't know that I want to have a raising range on the flop. So flat the first small bet. And then we have this turn card. Um, do we just check behind, check the turn with a set? We are pretty much going to be check calling and yeah. villain's going to be checking behind quite often and over realizing. So it is a little bit of a conundrum on the turn with a set. It's true. We're not check, you know, we're not check raising with a set. We we can't. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's it's something that I'll I'll think more about. Um, but for now, we just went for it and got the result that we were looking for in this second hand. So, if you want to join in the discussion, talk more about <laughs> donking, um, hop in greatness village. And that's that's really yeah. All you can also go to the website, the Tactical Tuesday website, and uh, look for the episodes where I tried donking. I think mine were mostly flop donks. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more donk stuff, check out the website. Yeah, you can donk the turn when you call the flop bet with all the hands that you have. That's, that's true. Side benefit. All right, uh, that's all I got for this week. Y'all have a good one. Best of luck if you're battling at the WSOP. Yeah. See you next week. Did you say weekend? I said see you next week. (laughs) Messed up your own tagline. Thanks for listening to Chasing Poker Greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com to get the newsletter. Join the Greatness Village community. Book a coaching session or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast.